What's going on my fellow reef builders? I'm Jake Adams and I know that a lot of you have been waiting patiently for the 400 gallon to finally get started. We've done a few different videos showing off building different components of this aquarium, but we have a problem at the studio that can only be solved by more reef tanks. We have a ton of acroporas, tables acros, uh, stags and different varieties that are just so big and we fragged them down we've grafted them back to their bases we've spread them to other tanks but we're just completely out of room so now it's time to set up a forever home is the hardline reef tank here at the studio that is going to be dedicated solely to super high flow corals almost virtually all acroporas and um, it's salted up it's going I got a nice long list of things to tell you about this tank so thanks for joining me and uh, I can't wait to tell you what we've done to this tank so far before we dive into the different components of this aquarium, this is a eight foot uh, planet aquarium. It's 375 gallons, eight feet long, 30 inches wide, 30 inches tall. Um, it has high clarity glass on the front and sides. The bottom you can see is a gray color and that's actually a PVC bottom um, that we're able to drill for a closed loop. Um, but the other thing about this tank is it also has a metal framed top. So we have the minimum amount of braces that's going to not cause much shadowing inside the aquarium. Um, and when I calculate the exact volume of this aquarium, it's 375 gallons. I'm just going to round it up to 400 gallons because I've never really been in that club. And uh, that is 400 gallons with the sump. Um, so we've got it salted up so far. And um, before I tell you a bit about what's inside, just as importantly, we have an auto top off solution because as you can imagine, a tank of this size is, is going to require a big volume of water. Um, so this is just a standard pickle barrel and we have a small outlet at the bottom that connects to an auto top off valve. And one recent trick, well, one trick that we applied to this pickle barrel recently is um, kind of a water level indicator that we actually have been using for years on some of the other pickle barrels. And we just have two unit seals at the top and bottom and splurged a little bit, you know, on that clear PVC. Um, you can do this with barbs and just some vinyl tubing, but vinyl tends to just not be as clear over time. And you know, this is kind of a showcase reef tank. So we splurged the extra $30 for the uh, PVC elbow and the PVC pipe, which lets us see at a glance when this is ready for a refill. Some of you looking at this reef tank right now may have noticed the lights that we have on this aquarium. Um, I have a Hydra 64 HD here and then two primes on the side. The primes are specifically just to kind of jumpstart a little bit of the biofilm and a little bit, a little bit of the algaes and so I can see what I'm, what I'm doing. And then the Hydra is going to be for our first test coral, but these are not the lights we're going to go with. These are just kind of starter lights, so still need to build a really nice light bar to go over it. It's going to give us all the freedom we want and need to install the lights on this aquarium. Um, leaning towards like eight XR30 radions, um, six XR30 radions. But I, if I have the inclination, I really wanna go with multiples of XR15. So that could be 10, that could be 12, but I'm really gonna build out this section and then this section and then this section. And you may have noticed this giant barrel in here. I guess it's not a giant barrel, it's more like a giant can. This is the Abyss Flow Cannon 150. Um, I really built the entire aquarium uh, to revolve around the closed loop to just to have crazy invisible flow. Um, but this thing just produced so much flow that I am gonna operate it in this aquarium. It is probably, this is like, this tank is way too small for this particular pump because if I push it to, uh, let's say, even 80, 90% um, at this water height, um, it'll start drawing air in from the surface. So I'm running at about 50 to 60%. Still need to learn a lot more about it, but it just gives me an extra peace of mind, especially since I'm starting on that end of the tank, that with the two closed loops and the flow cannon, um, this thing is gonna be an absolute washing machine. So we've already kind of have a tentative uh, aquascape layout done and just like the Australian tank the rockscape looks a little goofy the first part of that is we have a bottom mounted closed loop so we have two uh, Ecotech Marine Vectra L2s plumbed to pull from the bottom and return into the tank through one and a half inch, inch adductors uh, the adductor at first the back pressure from the adductor cuts the flow back in half but then it multiplies it by four so it turns our 3,000 gallon per hour 
nominal pump into a 6,000 gallon per hour pump simply by leverage, leveraging fluid dynamics. And then we were able to build a kind of a rudimentary cage to go over that so that we could skate over it. And I know this is not the most ideal setup, especially for maintenance, but hopefully we're gonna be able to uh, limit the amount of uh, biology in this aquarium so we don't have a ton of snails, we don't have a ton of little bits and pieces that can go in everywhere. And um, contrary to popular opinion, if it wasn't for those bottom mounted um, closed loops, if like I had the room in the back um, to put the closed loop on the back, this would be such an awesome tank to actually have a rubble bottom using something like Two Little Fishies Reborn because uh, I feel like that, that gives a really natural appearance um, and over time every little chip of coral is going to grow onto it and coralline is going to grow onto the uh, rubble but that's not the situation we find ourselves in. So um, like I said it looks a little bit goofy right now um, because it is specifically aquascaped for the coral. So as I'm putting the pieces together, um, all I can think about is what corals I'm gonna put inside. So I've kind of br mentally broken this up into three uh, zones and I'm gonna work on them sequentially. So on this right side, this is gonna be all stag horns. So that's why I've limited the rock to as low as possible because healthy stag horns are gonna hit the surface probably within a year and a half to two years um, minimum. Over here, we're gonna have a little bit more table acros. So they're gonna be able to just occupy this open area. And then over here is gonna be a little bit more classic acros, I guess, like your tenuous and your millies, all your corn and boasts pillow shaped acropores are going to be kind of along the bottom and around the mid middle section and then at the very top we're going to have the fat corn cob acropores like uh, acropora humilis digitifera and gemifera so um oh yeah one last thing I really just had such an epiphany when we were putting together the aquascape because I had piles of carob sea, I had piles of cornerstone, and I had piles of Morocco rock from Tropic Eden. And as I was putting it together, I decided, you know what? Let me just pick from each one and just see how it comes together. And I'll tell you what, man, it became like such a natural looking aquascape because when you dive to a wild reef, the reef is not built by one type of coral, right? It's built by multiple types of corals. So if you do a reef with just Marco rock or just Maraca, just cornerstone, just Carib Sea Life Rock, it kind of just has a certain look to it. But being able to kind of mix and match some of the large dimensions of the cornerstone with the high texture of the maraca and then some really great colors and some other textures from the carob sea life rock i feel like it made a really uh, natural looking reef tank um, like i said you're gonna have to trust me on this as the tank grows out because i know it looks really goofy right now especially being able to to see the cages that protect the adductor on the bottom if i could do it over again um, i would use i would have used black pvc for that but it's already going and we're just gonna have to work around it so um, i think that's everything for the tank we've had salted for about 10 days or so um, so it's not super duper clear um, but uh, let me show you a little bit more of the equipment that's running this tank currently you guys ready to see this here we go this is not your typical sump style and this um, really just was an evolution out of necessity so the first thing that you'll notice is uh, I'm using an Aquion 60 breeder uh, sump. Uh, so this is a 60 gallon sump. You'll notice it's running really low. That wasn't exactly by design, um, but I may have drilled the hole for the auto, auto top off float valve just a little bit too low, but no worries because we happen to be using um, the uh, interesting Ukrainian made Alex Loga & Co. ANC skimmer from the Ukraine. Uh, we received those uh, a few weeks ago and um, the whole staff has actually been quite impressed at how it's running. It, it really uh, is producing a volcano of foam unlike uh, many that we've seen in the market lately. And what's interesting about that protein skimmer is it uses uh, like a 10,000 liter per hour rated g bow pump, but it's mounted without a volute. So I don't know if you guys remember, but a handful of years there was kind of uh, um, 
a small spurt of protein skimmer designs that didn't have the volute uh, to try and save space inside. Um, but man, it really chops up the air, it has a really fine bubble diffuser that doesn't allow any big bubbles to go through. Um, so for right now, it is creating incredibly good foam. There's nothing to skim in the tank because we've just you know, salted it up. There's not really any nutrients uh, in here for it to, to skim out. It is a little bit on the louder side, but it's not the pump operation. It's not the air silencer. It is the sheer churning of the air water mixture inside. So interestingly, it's kind of like a white noise. It's not distracting. So if you used it in an average setup that has some other noises going on, um, it wouldn't be noticeable above it, but we really aim for silence. So um, we do hear it. Perhaps it'll break in and get a little bit better over time, um, but you'll notice uh, yeah, this is a, almost like a blue collar sump, right? We just have an eight inch filter sock on the left being held with a clamp. Um, we've got the continuous siphon overflow. And um, it's not my intention to constantly run this sump at such a low level, but I have some other 60 breeders um, that I'll be able to modify from this and put in a partition um, where I want it, but just gonna have to figure out how I want the future like permanent sump to run um, but starting with this 4 by 18 inch sump in here really gives me some size to go on so it's uh, 48 by 18 so I think I'm gonna be interested in something that's closer to like 24 by 60 so two feet by five feet will take up a little bit more room on the side and then take up some of this unused space here in the front and uh, let me show you the control center we've got the uh, controllers here this is gonna be the return pump and then we have our two closed loops here, the closed loops. Uh, the Vectra from Ecotech Marine is one of the few um, impeller style pumps that actually has a mode for closed loop operation. So these are kind of functioning like vor Vortex in terms of their programming as far as the alternating flow. Um, I think I have one set to a 12 minute gyre and the other one set to an 11 minute gyre. So some of the times they're alternating, some of the times they're fighting against each other and just creating an explosion of flow in the middle of the tank. And other times it's just you know a little bit still and only the adductors from the return are uh, producing the flow so for dosing we're gonna use uh, four Versa pumps right here I don't have them uh, programmed yet or uh, connected to a dosing container um, I found a really cool way to mount uh, the controller for the Abyss uh, flow cannon. These are just metal brackets and the controller just happens to slip right in right before it hits the uh, connector here. And I just thought it was nice and neat off the bottom so it's not, uh, you know, if there's ever a flood, it's not in there and it's not mounted to anything so it's gonna have the best airflow possible. Uh, you'll see I have uh, the Apex and the Trident, uh, the custom Reef Builders Edition, white with blue trim. So that's really gonna be used uh, simply for monitoring um, our chemistry, right? So we have the chemistry down on like all the other tanks. This is a brand new tank. So what better way to just start getting a feel for it than to uh, just have an automatic machine test calcium, uh, alkalinity, magnesium, plus some of the, the physical parameters like temperature, salinity, and pH. I'm not sure what else to show in here other than it's time to see the tank a little bit with we're just gonna give it a healthy glug just because there's not much in here. I've already added some ammonia, some phosphate, and some nitrate. So we're trying to set this tank up really, really as clean as possible. Um, interestingly enough, the hair algae you see on some of the Carib Sea rocks is actually from when this tank was running uh, with fresh water. Uh, this tank was running with fresh water for about two months while I just kind of felt it up and decided whether or not I was ready to pull the trigger and salt it up. So um, we're, we're past that point now so just going to give it a healthy glug of some microbacter start xlm because we're starting the tank it's a 400 gallon tank so i'm sure it can take a generous amount and then um, a little microbacter 7 which is going to introduce some of the foundational um, microbiology and bacteria of the aquarium um, that has just been set up so going to give it a good shake going to give it a good glug maybe turn off that protein skimmer for a little bit let the bacteria do something I hope you guys are legitimately as excited as I am about seeing this tank running. This has been kind of a daunting task to start up on top of all the other aquariums we already run. 
but everything is so well dialed in now and that our only challenge is that we got a lot of really big acros uh, that just deserve more room. You know, some of them are grown from frags and now they're like this big and uh, they deserve some literal breathing room to stretch their polyps and, uh, you know, really get this thing started. So like I said, I'm going to start on this side, really focusing on the aquascape over here, focus on stags. And just so I don't get too distracted, just start one section at a time. Um, we're really going to try hard to never introduce Valonia, hair algae, especially Aptasia. If I could make this the Aptasia free tank forever, that would be such a huge win. Um, because outside of reef pests and a little bit to a lesser degree, the coral pests, um, just managing regular reef aquarium chem chemistry is a challenge to keep up, but not a challenge to get it right. So if you guys have any questions about this particular aquarium, uh, put those down in the comments below. We're going to be uh, making a lot of moves on this aquarium. And while it's uh, cooking, uh, we're going to show you some of our other displays, which are doing really, really well. So um, one thing I'd like to know from you is uh, what lights do you think we should put on this tank? I'm heavily leaning towards the Radions. Once again, just kind of debating between the G6 Blue and the G6 Pro. Something inside of me thinks I should really like mix and match the Pros and the Blues but if you have any other opinions go ahead and put those down below so um, I want to thank everybody who's been watching the channel for this long who remembers when we first installed the closed loop on this tank um, for your patience but the time has come we already have all the corals I have a lot of the fish and uh, yeah, now we have the courage to really get started. So I want to thank every company who's contributed to this tank build, Brightwell Aquatics, Ecotech Marine, and Top Shelf Aquatics for sponsoring the channel, which really gives us kind of the, the, the freedom to just show you how we reef. And uh, yeah, so thanks for joining us on the ride. I'm really excited to get this tank going and to share everything about it with you. Uh, make sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll catch you guys on the next video very soon.